Hello, I am Professor G. S. Bajpayee presenting EPG Partiala course in Criminology. This lecture is focused on victims in the criminal justice process. The criminal justice system in India is excessively loaded in favor of the accused. The main principle on which the legal system is based is to let 99 persons get away free than to have even one innocent person punished. The tenet while preventing injustice to one innocent denies justice to 99 victims of crime. Right of offenders are statutorily protected. For instance, the offender has a constitutional right to be informed of ground of arrest and has the right to consult and to be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice. Uh, during the trial, the benefit of doubt always goes to the accused and the victim in spite of having suffered victimization remains neglected. The victim does not play an active role in influencing the process of decision making in the criminal justice system. In the course of crime investigation, victims are merely treated as a source of information, enabling the police to arrest the culprit or to collect evidence. In the court, the role of victim is that of a witness for the prosecution. Resultantly, his suffering as victim seldom attract attention. On the contrary, the offender has many rights and privileges during the entire process of criminal justice, both before and even after his conviction. Victimological discourse and activism is gradually now shaping in India. Over the recent decades, there has been a greater acknowledgement of the need to have a better involvement of victim in the justice dispensation uh, procedure. The legislative amendments have initiated which ensured even a victim is now competent to question through appeal the acquittal of the accused and conviction for a lesser offence or the award of an inadequate sentence. The recent most development in criminal law by the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013 has overhauled uh, the law on sexual offence and other concern uh, areas to a victim's advantage, both substantive and procedurally. It has made criminal law highly victim friendly. Section 166B has been inserted that provided for punishment for non-treatment of a victim. It has made acts of voluntary, uh, voluntarily causing of grievous hurt by acid, sexual harassment, voyeurism, stalking, etc. New offences under the Indian Penal Code, the offence of rape hereafter would not be merely confined to penal vaginal penetration, but would include other forms as well. It covers object penetration within its ambit, the possibility of giving a lower than the minimum prescribed punishment has also been done, done away with. It now has to be minimum of seven years and extendable to life imprisonment. Some very significant additions have been made to the list of aggravated forms of rape, with rape by a relative, teacher, guardian, or person in authority or trust, and also where the perpetrator is in position of control. Uh, these have made the understanding of offences against women very comprehensive and encompasses several dimensions of women. Victimization, primarily that one comes across almost every day, a fact but stressing the relevance of being made penal in other uh, current times. The section 10161 CRPC as amended provides for the statement of a rape victim to be mandatorily recorded by 
a woman police officer. The newly inserted section 357A and 357C of uh, criminal procedure code stipulate that the compensation for rape victim to be in addition to the fine payable to them and that the hospitals private or public are duty bound to provide immediate first aid or medical treatment to a rape victim. These and other changes are welcome and much needed steps towards victim assistance and victim support, creation of new offense and, and stipulation of minimum penalties along with making the upper limit harsher only come across as a policy of zero tolerance adopted by the state of, in matters of victimization in the country, particularly of women. Uh, now, let us turn to the victims and police debate, where we will be taking an overview on the developments in foreign countries, especially in the light of problems of crime victim vis-a-vis -vis police, which have received greater attention in foreign countries as compared to India. The victim movement received a shot in the arm with the adoption of declaration of basic principles of justice for victims of crime and abuse of power by the 7th United Nations Congress on Prevention of Crime and the Treatment of Offenders, Milan 1985. This declaration suggested several measures to improve police response towards crime victims. The declaration calls upon the member states to treat the crime victims with compassion and respect for their dignity. Victims according to, to this declaration have certain rights which must be protected to ensure that they get a fair deal in the criminal justice process. The administrative process must respond sensitively to the needs of crime victims, minimizing their inconveniences providing protection and security to their families against any intimidation and retaliation. The declaration further recommends that the police along with other relevant agencies of the criminal justice system should receive training to get sensitized to the needs of crime victims. This declaration expects the member states to inform victims about the likely sources of victimization risk. The victim counts on police to accept their version of events, to launch a thorough investigation, to recover stolen property and to gather evidence that will lead to conviction in the court. It causes disappointment to the victim if the police do not initiate investigation in time, disbelieves the accusations made by the victim and fall, fail to make arrest and to recover stolen property. From the victim's viewpoint, the police have successfully achieved their objective when they take a suspect into custody and charge him with the crime. Uh, often this chance or often this clearance rate is used to evaluate the performance of police and therefore the victims and police interaction becomes very important. Now let us look at another aspect when we are talking about the victim's position in the criminal justice system. I think it would be pertinent to look at the victims vis a vis trial because many issues relating to crime victims relate to their experiences and during the trial process in the court. Now let us turn to look at this experience that the victim gains in their interaction with the court. The victim has not been guaranteed any legal rights and privileges as far as the stage of adjudication is concerned. The status of victims therefore in the trial process remains what we call that 
he becomes or she becomes the item of evidence or a non-person which Shipland uh, says. Uh, the victims being witness to a crime is treated as source of evidence merely. The problem which the victim had to face is harassment and inconveniences of all kind to which they are subjected during the trial process and generally uh, there is a lack of concern which is shown towards them which also make them experience some sort of uh, secondary victimization. Now secondary victimization is something which is extremely crit crucial from the viewpoint of uh, the victim's interaction with the court and the functionaries in the court. This has been identified as to be something very, very important in recent victimological research. And therefore, I wish to underline that while any discussion is held on this subject, we can always scrutinize the victim's experiences in terms of their exposure to secondary victimization which is considered to be highly unnecessary and avoidable. Now, let us look at another issue which deals with the interaction of the victim uh, with the prosecution agencies. As we all know that the victim's case is represented by the state where prosecution is appointed uh, to look after the victim's case in the court and the conditions relating to the prosecution in India are highly critical as most of the failure in cases are attributed to the failure of prosecution. Now let us look at what kind of uh, inconveniences are experienced by the victim vis-a-vis -vis prosecution. We all know that the prosecution takes up the case of victim on behalf of the state. The emphasis of prosecution is never on the personal concerns and problems of crime victims. This is something highly critical because uh, prosecution is the functionaries in the state, one of the functionaries in the state. So they are representing merely the case of the victim in that capacity. So sometimes it is alleged that the prosecution is not representing the victim in true spirit. The prosecution is committed to achieving the successful prosecution resulting in conviction of the uh, offender. Contrary to the Indian conditions, the role of prosecution in some foreign countries like the USA is highly favorably inclined towards crime victim. Now here in this segment, we wish to take a view what is happening in other countries as far as the role of prosecution is concerned. As we have just seen that in the US, the prosecution is interested with a clear mandate to effectively represent the interest of the victim. Therefore, the responsibilities of prosecution in this country towards the victim as per the report of President's Task Commission on Victims in 1982 are, let us look at what are those responsibilities. The first thing that the prosecution is to ensure to keep victims informed of the status of their cases. From the initial uh, charges lost against uh, defendants to the parole of conviction. Now these two stages are very important as they provide some important information to the victims of crime. A and again we can look at to bring to the attention of appropriate authorities the victims view on question of bail, negotiated plea, dismissed cases and dropped charges, sentences and restitution. Now these stages are highly critical from the viewpoint of victim as victim is supposed to know as to what is happening to the accused in terms of granting probation, granting bail and all these things. Now in the same vein we can look at the prosecution is also charged with the responsibility to protect the victims from harassment, threats, injuries and other forms of intimidation and retaliation. This is often seen in India also that in some 
important cases which are highly crucial cases where the victim is likely to receive threat, intimidation and even retaliation. Now there is no expressed arrangement in this country to protect crime victims in these situations. Whereas we see in this document and on this slide that some clear arrangements have been made in the US to protect the victims against these situations. Also to reserve cases as quickly as possible. This is in fact to resolve cases as quickly as possible without unnecessary delays. Now also to help victims avoid needless waste of their time and money by notifying them of court experiences and schedule changes. Now this saves the victim from unnecessary delay waiting in terms of knowing their uh, turn to appear in the court. Similarly to assist victims in getting back stolen property recovered by the police. Now uh, let us look at how the victim looks at the defense lawyer because def defense lawyer is charged with the responsibility of presenting the case of the accused in the court. How this process affects the victim that is the main objective in this section. So victim and defense lawyers are regarded as natural enemies. They are natural adversaries within the adversary uh, system of criminal justice. And the victim in the present study we have seen that the victim uh, is often in the conflict with the defense lawyer on two very important matters. First attempt of the lawyer is to get the cases postponed and using unfair tactics to undermine the credibility of the prosecution witness. Now uh, let us turn to see how the victim is placed vis a vis judge and how judge becomes important in the case of victim. So judge plays a very pivotal role in the adversarial system of criminal justice. This role however is perceived differently by victim and accused. To defendant judges appear to be partisan acting on behalf of the state and having a leaning towards the victim and the prosecution. The victim's perception of a judge is often that of a guardian of the right of the criminal rather than victim. Victim of crime tend to have frustrating experiences with the functioning of the trial process, particularly over the issues relating to bail decisions and sentencing policies in many countries. Now another issue we can look at that relates to bail. Indiscriminate grant of bail even in heinous and non available offenses cause a serious concern to many. More often than not victims selected for this study expressed some apprehension of being harmed or threatened by the culprit released on bail. Uh, we can also look at how sentencing takes place in different countries and what are the important concerns of crime victims in this process. Now judges exercise a great deal of discretion when pronouncing sentences in the court. Variations are often noticed in the severity of punishment which is meted out uh, in comparable cases. This causes dissatisfaction or a feeling of frustration amongst victims particularly when lenient punishment is given to the accused in their cases. Now any discussion on victims and criminal justice interaction would naturally entail what does it mean by victims and how the definition of victim is provided in the law. The definition of victim is provided in section 2 W A of the CRPC which was amended in 2008 and this definition says victim as a person who has suffered any loss or injury caused by reason of the act or omission for which the accused person has been charged. Bolstered up 
the it has bolstered up the assurance that that in the provision to follow the term victim would figure. Uh, in the international regime, while defining the victim, the term victim, the UN declaration on basic principle of justice for victims of crime and abuse of power spells out the harm suffered by the victim as including physical, mental injury, emotional suffering, economic loss or substantial impairment of their uh, fundamental rights. So, the reporting and investigation right of access to justice is something that I wish to bring at this stage, where we will discuss that how the victim uh, finds himself or herself in this situation. So, ordinarily a victim of crime has two courses open to him or her while intending to put the criminal justice process into motion. So, a first information report could be lodged before the police. If the offence being a complaint of is, is cognizable one or a complaint could be moved before the competent judicial magistrate. The latter would open regardless of whether the offence is cognizable or non-cognizable. In case of a cognizable offence, as soon as the victim as an informant approaches the police for getting an FIR lost, the court under section 154.1 mandates it to be reduced into writing. The victim is not rudderless in the eventuality of any blatant refusal on the part of the officer to act upon the information he or she has adduced. As a recourse, it could be brought to the notice of the superintendent of police, who in turn would be expected to direct an investigation into the complaint. It had become a matter of debate if the police had the power to indulge in any preliminary investigation into the veracity of the information or not. However, the same has been effectively put to rest recently in the matter of Lalita Kumari versus government of UP and others. So, in this case, the Supreme Court, while citing a reference to its ruling in the state of Haryana versus Bhajanlal, reaffirmed the position that subject to certain limited exception as a matter of general practice, the police is duty bound to straight away record an FIR under section 154 CRPC, whether the information uh, discloses the commission of a cognizable offence. This has significantly cemented and strengthened for the victims the right of access to justice. Medical examination of victims of crime is something which we would be discussing at this stage. We know that victims of sexual assault under section 164A, which provides for the medical examination of a victim of rape. It was introduced by the amendment in the year 2005 in congruence with 172 law commission report. The recommendatory efforts find their root in the Supreme Court's directive in Sakshi versus Union of India to the fact that the law commission was to consider the feasibility of the recommendations that were being put forth by the petitioner, uh, petitioner organization. This, this provisions for the first time uh, tried to define section 2, uh, where the word section 2 W A in the CRPC. In this segment, let us look at the medical examination of the victims of sexual offences, because medical examination of the victims of rape has been a fundamental uh, entitlement which included in the procedural law and its utility is not just restric restricted to the gathering of evidences from the person of the victim, but also extends to identifying the emergent needs for medical assistance. These would 
also become pertinent at the stage of rehabilitation, compensation eventually. Uh, we can also look at the rights of uh, crime victims during the trial. Uh, so, a trial if it were to be a fair one needs to address the triangulation of interest of the accused, the victim and the society all at once while laying down the law on how the notion of fair trial ought to be perceived as the Supreme Court against the backdrop of the Gujarat riots in 2002 in the case of Jahira Habibullah Sheikh uh, versus the state of uh, Gujarat and some key recommendations and observations uh, made. The right to be heard is the generic right out of which flow very various participatory rights uh, for crime victims. So, it is the flip side of what is termed by certain jurists as the duty to understand on the part of institutions involved in legal process in dealing with the crime. Now, uh, victim participation in trial proceeding is something highly pertinent on a, any subject which intends to discuss the victim's interaction vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, trial or vis-a-vis -vis court. So, engaging a private counseling is very important because Justice Malimath committee uh, held uh, that many recommendations were made on victim justice and they made that they said the victim should be made a party to assist the court, the prosecution to be precise. The person could well be permitted to pose questions or suggest questions to be put forth by the court to the witnesses produced by the parties. And uh, towing this particular line, uh, the amendment uh, of 2008 were introduced which brought an element of victim participation, though not as active as contemplated by the report. Uh, it inserted to provide section 14, uh, section 24-8, creating a possibility of engaging a private counsel by the victim for assisting the prosecutor. Uh, similarly, uh, a very important right is under discussion which is called victims uh, right to dignity, comfort, confidentiality and protection. And also the victims convenience and protection should be the issue of utmost priority uh, for the justice dispensation system. The victims are entitled to testify as prosecution witness. However, they, are of, they often bear intimidation tactics by the offenders which tend to deter them from disposing of freely and truthfully. Right to participation and right to participation at the stage of plea bargaining is very important because the Malimath committee introduced a full chapter on this subject where it is rendered that victim as a party uh, to plea bargaining and thus when mutually satisfactory dispositions has been worked out, the victim like other sides, the public prosecutor and the defense is also entitled to be heard on the quantum of punishment. Uh, victims role in compounding of offense is something very, very important because uh, it brings both the parties together and it is on the prosecution to facilitate the victim participation at this stage. Primarily, uh, we see crime as a wrong against the state and the society. Yet, they take very private and personal uh, overtones in some offenses which are mostly non-cognizable. So, the court provides a scope for compounding of these offenses. So, some of these offenses mandate as a condition, uh, as a procedure, the court's permission for compounding to become uh, permissible. 
So, as the code makes it clear that an order of acquittal for the accused is what would be the effect of compounding. Uh, this composition itself is bound to be of critical interest to the victims of crime. Thus, the court while spelling out those who alone can compound such offenses afford the opportunity solely such person who were at the receiving end and of the illegal act over the state's prosecuting agency. Now, victims right to appeal the Malimath committee in its report had recommended vehemently that the victim shall have a right to prefer an appeal against any adverse order. From what initially were extremely slow hesitant baby steps in the process of bringing the victim in as recognizable entity in the entire procedure, a giant leap was taken when the uh, section 372 was inserted by the amendment of 2008. It has given the victim a right to assert a dissenting vice by filing an appeal independently against the dissatisfaction with the trial court's order either of an acquittal verdict or convicting the accused for a lesser offence or on the award of insufficient compensation. The statement of objects and reasons clearly shows this. Uh, in the conclusion, it can be said that it is pertinent to mention that it is not to be forgotten that it is the victim who is the real sufferer and not the accused. However, it is the accused who is given privileges. The object is not to take away the privileges from the accused, but to provide privileges to the victim who suffer at the hands of the accused. Thank you.